When it comes to business travel in Orlando, it's never business as usual. Sure, I could go on for days about all the incredible places to hold meetings, or the Michelin dining, or the breadth of industries that call it home. But when it's time for your business to make the extraordinary happen, Albert Monero of Limitless Solutions said it best. Orlando is an incredible place for innovation. So dive in and see what's happening in Orlando where the possibilities for business travel are unbelievably real. Learn more at orlandoforbusiness.com. Tom Swalbrick on LBC. It's Friday. It's 10 to 6. The sun went over the yard arm ages ago. So time to pop open another edition of Simon Marks' American Week. Tom, this was an American week in which some rights were wronged, some scores finalised and some questions lingered about the US relationship with the UK. Let's start with the writing of at least one wrong. American basketball star Brittany Griner was prized free from the remote Russian prison colony in which she had started to serve a nine-year sentence for the somewhat minor crime of entering Russia with a vape in her baggage containing traces of cannabis oil. She's on the ground. Stop it. Yep, she's on the ground. Really? It's, really it's just oh. such a good day. Oh my God. President Biden breaking the news to Sherelle Griner, the basketball star's wife. Meanwhile, on a plane somewhere in Russia, Brittany Griner herself didn't appear fully to understand what was going on until the news was broken to her in what we can presume is the final Russian propaganda video relating to her inequitable detention. Are you ready for a flight? Uh, yes. Do you know where I'm heading to? No. No? No. 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 You fly back home to, to the U.S. To the U.S. Oh, okay. Everything will be fine. Okay. Brittany Griner's nine months being ground down by the Russians ended after the United Arab Emirates brokered a prisoner swap between the US and the Kremlin. Freed from 12 years in an American jail, the notorious arms dealer Victor Boot. Known as the Merchant of Death, he was serving 25 years for plotting to kill US officials and American citizens and providing aid to terrorists. Like a scene ripped from Hollywood, Griner and Boot were escorted past one one another on an airport tarmac in the UAE, their respective ordeals over, but for the White House, a new one beginning. In this prisoner swap, why did Russia get such a better deal? Fox News White House correspondent Pete Ducey going after White House press secretary Karine Jean-Pierre. Here were our choices, Brittany or no one at all. And, and that's... Gave up a that's... professional athlete, we gave up a prolific arms dealer who was convicted of trying to kill Americans who is called the merchant of death. The professional athlete is also an American citizen. So let's not forget that. But it's the White House that is being accused by Republicans of forgetting another American, Paul Whelan, a businessman and former Marine serving 16 years hard labor in Russia on trumped-up espionage charges. Secretary of State Antony Blinken assuring reporters that Mr. Whelan has not been abandoned to his fate. This was not a choice of which American to bring home. The choice was one or none. I wholeheartedly wish that we could have brought Paul home today, but we will stay at it. It must, of course, be purely coincidence that Republicans are fuming over the release of an American basketball star who just happens to be both black and gay. Although certainly many of them spent their week trying to halt the legality of same-sex marriages like the one enjoyed by Ms. Griner. I hope and pray that my colleagues will find the courage to join me in opposing this misguided and this dangerous bill. A weeping Republican right-winger, Congresswoman Vicki Hartzler of Missouri, urging the House of Representatives not to codify same-sex marriage into federal law, a move that gives same-sex relationships added legal protection against any effort the Republican-dominated Supreme Court might make to outlaw them. Her tears were for naught. The yeas are 258, the nays are 169, present one. The motion is adopted. 
Nancy Pelosi making full use of her gavel, perhaps cognizant of the fact that after America's midterm elections last month, she won't have it much longer. From January, she'll be replaced as Speaker of the House by a Republican whose party will narrowly control the legislature. But this was the week when Democrats had more to cheer about the outcome of those elections. Congratulations, man. Thank you, sir. That's a big deal. President Biden on the phone to Raphael Warnock. On Tuesday night, he won a crucial runoff election for a Senate seat in Georgia. His defeat of Trump-backed NFL star Herschel Walker did indeed seem to be a big deal for the Democrats, indicating they could expect to control the Senate by 51 seats to 49. Those hopes were rattled today when conservative-leaning Democrat Kirsten Sinema of Arizona announced she's leaving the party and will sit as an independent. But however the final disposition works out, that loss in the Georgia runoff left Republicans fuming. We don't change anything. We have the same people in place and leadership. We just keep doing the same thing over and over again. I'm pissed tonight, frankly. Fox News host Laura Ingram, a Trump loyalist, suddenly excoriating Republicans for sticking with a tired old formula. Her fellow Fox presenter, Sean Hannity, who spent months relentlessly amplifying false claims about the legitimacy of postal votes in America suddenly couldn't understand why Republicans in Georgia didn't cast more of them. I think Republicans have been unwilling, for whatever reason, reluctant, resistant, to voting early and voting by mail. Do they have to get over that reluctance, that resistance? Sure, look, I mean, you, you have to play the game by the rules that are existing. Former House Speaker Newt Gingrich there criticizing Republican voters for failing to play a game that he has also relentlessly told them is rigged. Georgia chickens coming home to roost and on Capitol Hill at least one Republican, Senator Mike Braun of Indiana, saying voters are sending the party a message that the party needs to heed. You could never have anything that's going to resonate if there's not a clear plan of what you're for. We are basically for nothing, and we complain about it, and then say, well, maybe we'll tell you after we're uh, elected. It's not going to work. Although perhaps that lets a party that has told Americans what it now stands for off the hook just a little too easily. The biggest beast in the Republican jungle was not let off the hook this week. Guilty on all counts. We have a verdict. It is guilty on all 17 counts. Left-leaning MSNBC gleefully reporting the conviction of the Trump organization on charges of tax fraud. The former president's businesses found guilty of more than 15 years of illegal activity activity, paying top executives with perks that should have been reported instead as salaried income. Blood drawn by prosecutors, sparking another week in which Trump loyalists rapidly distanced themselves from him. Larry Kudlow, chief economic advisor in the Trump White House, this week on Fox. I don't understand what our former boss is doing. Kanye West hanging out with white nationalists, hanging out with anti-Semitic people, talking about ending the Constitution. He's losing support left and right. I hear it everywhere. You don't say. Let's end the week with shameful scenes in a Washington courtroom yesterday where American motorist Ann Sekoulas finally and very belatedly faced only a measure of justice for driving the car that killed Harry Dunn. The 18-year-old knocked from his motorcycle near a Northamptonshire Air Force base. Why didn't you go to attend court in the UK? Thank you. The very excellent James Matthews of Sky News chasing Miss Sekoulas through the courthouse where, by video link, she received a suspended eight-month jail sentence in Britain. Would she show any sign of contrition over Harry Dunn's death and then her decision to flee the country? What words do you have for Harry Dunn's family today? Have a nice day. And off she walked, cocking yet another snook at a bilateral US-UK extradition treaty that, as WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange may soon find out, only seems to operate one way. Equal under the law, Tom, except not really. From Washington, T.C., LBC's America editor, Simon Marks. When it comes to business travel in Orlando, it's never business as usual. Sure, I could go on for days about all the incredible places to hold meetings, or the Michelin dining, or the breadth of industries that call it home. But when it's time for your business to make the extraordinary happen, Albert Monero of Limitless Solutions said it best. Orlando is an incredible place for innovation. 
So dive in and see what's happening in Orlando, where the possibilities for business travel are unbelievably real. Learn more at orlandoforbusiness.com.